undisputed. <laughs> the undisputed champ, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it feels amazing. God, how good does that feel for you? Oh, top of the world, after, liberating. After all that shit you had to take from people for so long. How many months was it? 13 months before 13 I could get back in there. 13 months of people talking shit. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> like, But how sweet must it have been when they raise your hand and you got the W? Uh, it was, and still, it, it was kind of a, a mind fuck a little bit because it was a split decision, which I was like, wait, I, I mean, like going back now, I can see why people were saying that. But in my head, I thought I had that thing locked up, easy, dead to rights. And uh, I was really confident going into the uh, scorecards. And then when that happened, I was like, you got to be kidding me. They're really trying to take this away from me after 13 months. I worked this hard. But um, you got yeah. it. Yeah, that was a weird split decision. I mean, it was a very good fight, but you definitely won the fight. I watched it again today, actually. I haven't. I've watched it one time with people. Normally after the fight, within I usually watch it that night, and I usually watch it a couple of times, and I analyze it, and I break it down, take notes, wins, losses, because that's how you grow. But for this one, I just wanted a break and just get away from the sport a little bit and just kind of decompress. Because, like I said, man, 13 months is a long time to just have people just chirping at you and you can't physically do anything because you're healing. So um, I was just really happy that I got it done. But now I, I need to go back and start to get back on that horse a little bit to, to get ready for the next one. Yeah, go back and watch it. You're going to appreciate it. It's, it's a great fight. It's a very good fight. But you're just different. You're so much different than the first fight, which made, you know, for someone who's had neck injuries myself, I, w I was wanting to ask you, like, how bad was your neck fucked up before the first fight? Yeah. So going into the fight, it was fucked up. So just to give a kind of a, a storyline, college wrestling, freshman year, me and this guy talking shit to each other. We call each other out. He's up a weight class for me, but he last year he wrestled the same weight class as me. I'm very competitive. That kid was competitive. We're both from New York. So we go after it. He slams me, spikes me on my head. Um, his name is Dave. Uh, spiked me on my head. I had stingers. So anytime I would turn my head, I would find like a radiant pain from like the crown of my head all the way down to like somewhere around that C, C disc or so like right around that area. And then each year it got progressively worse. Like that got better. But each year after that, wrestling, pulling on the head, we do hand fighting drills where we put our hands behind our back and you got to keep your head up in a, in a, wrestling position and someone of your partners is pulling on your neck and yanking it yanking it so that didn't help uh jiu-jitsu didn't help all these other things so over the years it got progressively worse i have mris dating back from i think 2014 when when i had my ufc debut and every time it was about my neck almost every single fight i had an mri about my neck because i kept thinking okay this is the time i might have to get a fix this is the time and we were able to just let it heal do PT, and then before the first Jan fight, when he pulled out, I was contemplating on pulling out because my neck had a really bad flare-up, and I thought I wasn't going to make it to the fight. And um, thankfully, he pulled out, gave me some time to do some PT at the UFC PI. That helped out a ton, All the, everyone over there, and then I got a shot. But the funny part about the shot, the cortisone shot, they put it in the wrong spot. But he's, the doctor said, oh, you, but you're still get the effects, he put it like a, a, a disc level too high. Wow. So C6, C7 was mine. He put it in the C5, C6, he said. And I'm like, well, it's not the end of the world, but I did feel some relief. But then I go through training. I'm rolling with this guy at 10th Planet, and uh, I'm in Vegas. And um, it's a guy I'd never trained with before. He jumps on my neck in a guillotine, mm. cranks my neck on a flow roll to warm up. <clears throat> it's the very second flow roll. Right before the fight again, I think about three weeks before the fight, and I, as soon as he did that and the, the role was done, I, I go to him and like, I know the rest of this week is shot, and I'm probably going to be out um, for a couple of days because of this. And that's exactly what happened. And then we had the fight, whatever. After the knee, I started having some atrophy because now they're rushing me to get back. Because I, t I texted Dana when I was when in the hospital. When you say after the knee, tell everybody. When you got so illegally, illegally kneed, kneed to the, the head. head. Yeah. yeah. From the first fight. Um, in March, March 6, 2021, that night we went to the hospital and uh, I texted Dana White and I told him, like, I want I want to have the rematch and get this done and settled the right way, like, as soon as we can kind of thing. They were offering me to fight, like, I think, like, two months, what was it, March, April, May. And I was like, dude, if I was suspended, if that was a legal shot, I would have been suspended. There's no way I can fight in May. Like, 
if it was a, a legal fight ending sequence, I would not even be cleared to, to compete. Did you get concussed from that? Oh, 100%. Yeah. So my analysts out there, my doctors that know what a concussion is, they know all the symptoms, they know what a concussion is. I threw up later that night. They thought I was drinking. I was like, I didn't drink. My friends were there and we they came to see me. So they all spent a ton of money, come out buying uh, tickets um, for the fight, for the flight. And some of them even gathered at the house that couldn't pay for the tickets to get out. So I had about 30 something people at the house and here I come back from the hospital and I still don't remember much of the night. I had to get like people to kind of help me recall what actually happened. And when we're at the house, I kind of want to just go to bed, but then at the same time, I felt bad because everyone spent so much money to come see me. You know, these are friends from college, from high school, um, middle school. So at that point, I'm kind of like, well, I can't just be mopey. And, you know, I have these guys trying to get, lift me up. Hey, guy, you, you made it here. One of the hardest things to do is to get to the top, to even earn a title shot. Everything you had to do just to get the title shot, um, you finally got it. This is not the way you want to win, but you get an opportunity to do it again. And I, you know, I had to keep it in perspective, and they helped me do that. And they just they wanted me to have a toast. So I had a toast with the with the with my with my friends and family, and people took that. And I never posted anything, but people took that because my friends were posting stuff because they were excited. I mean, I can understand why, but me, I'm not very excited as an athlete. You know, you know, no one wants to win like that. So it's not a very exciting moment. But right. I did understand this that this was special to have people that cared about you and have been following my career for so long to come out and want to hang out. So for that moment, for me, it was just really cool just to to take that moment in with them like hey man like after this i gotta kind of get back to work and uh we had a, a toast i said a couple words we'll do it again blah 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 and you know they said to the champion whatever there was videos out then it looked like i was faking i'm like guys i didn't know there was a protocol how you're supposed to react after being illegally need to in the head from a shot you don't even see right while you're exhausted in a high stakes fight I didn't know there was a certain way you're supposed to act. I'm like, was I supposed to pretend like I was being like macho? Like, I'm just trying to gather myself. But after that knee, I tried to get back into the gym like a week later. I started to hit the bag to try to see if I could make May happen. But I told um, my manager that's probably not going to be a go. They asked for June. That would have been the Brandon Moreno fight, I think. They had that rematch. And that would have been cool, but I couldn't do push-ups. I hit the bag. I was getting radiating pain down my arm. And uh, I couldn't do pull-ups, push-ups. Um, bag work, all that stuff. So this disc that you had, was it bulging at this point or had it deteriorated to the point where it's bone on bone? Like, where were you at? So that's a good question. I never really asked. It's just I'm having, I was having pressing from, I guess herniation is when it's mm -hmm. like spilling out. Yeah. So it was Is that press, what it is? Yes. Yeah, herniating? Yeah. So I guess that would be the proper term. So it was spilling out into the, the spinal column and pushing on the nerve. And they said, if it doesn't unblock within two to four weeks... That muscle could just end up just being like I could just lose muscle and that would just be the. That's like, Boss the, Rutan. Have you ever seen Boss Rutan's arm? His arm. I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it's it. It's crazy. He has yeah. one arm he calls baby arm because <laughs> it's like it's so atrophied. It's like yeah. he has nothing there. His other arm's jacked and he's got his right arm. He goes, I can't even hold a gallon of milk out. It's crazy. Yeah. And people don't understand how big of like how severe of a thing that really it's is. It's been years and years and years for him and it still hasn't grown back. Exactly. So yeah. for, that could have been me. That Had been I been, been just try career. to be yeah, yeah, try to be tough and say, you know, I'm just going to go fight. And um they they looked at it again and surgery was the option. I was so afraid to do the surgery though because I, I just wasn't sure how that was going to so let's like explain the surgery. You have a, an Art artificial disc. Disc replacement, yeah. Yeah. And Weidman had the same thing, right? So he did like a dis disectomy. He never had an artificial disc? No, he does. Yeah. But the first one he did was a disectomy, I think, where they just clean it out. Yeah. And then I guess that didn't do too well. And then he, they went in and actually took it out and replaced it. So we're like blood brothers. So when he had, <laughs> so when he had his uh, disc, you at least had a friend... That it was a training partner yep. you knew well, and you got a chance to ask him what the recovery was like, and how is he doing? Is he is he good to go with that now, or is he having issues? Well, he fought after. I mean, he fought Uriah, yeah. Uriah Hall. I mean, obviously, we, well, that, was that was a crazy. Yeah, but he's trained after that. Um, I think he actually fought even other fights after that as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think, I think he had a couple right. fights. I think he had a couple fights. But he said doesn't bother him. Same thing with me. You could barely even see my scar. And so your neck feels just like a normal neck now? It's weird. So I, I, I hit the doctor up, um, Dr. Robert Walker, Watkins Jr. He's the man, super cool, super accessible, and um, really like checks up on his patients, which, which 
not a lot of people do that. And thank God he was the guy who did the handle the uh, procedure because I think he did a phenomenal job from what I know. And um, just being very hands on with me, walking me through the process when I'm asking him about my recovery from a, a neurological standpoint, when I'm trying to get back into training and I'm like not feeling the muscle endurance and I still feel like I'm slowing down. And uh, he did a good job walking me through everything, just saying like, hey, man, it just kind of just takes time to stay with the stuff and the protocol as long as you're not having any pain kind of thing. So when you're saying muscle endurance, like like your neck was fatiguing, is that what you're saying? Just about everything. Everything. Like a lot quicker, like, like physically I looked good, but like internally, like all the... The neurological things, like the wiring, it's like since they severed the nerves, I guess it just took they a while. Sever your nerves? Well, I mean, I would imagine like when you cut the neck, that's there's probably nerve endings in they there. They don't cut your nerves. Well, you I know, know I, 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 think I think the think, nerves move out of the way or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they push them out of the way. Yeah, but when they do cut in, like something happens there mechanically where I'm you sure, have to yeah. like get everything back to working the way that it was before. Do you have an image of what it looks like now, like an MRI or an X-ray or something like that, where we could see the fake disc? That always freaks me out. Um, I might have something on my IG. Eddie Bravo's got one of those uh, in his lower back. He's got a fake one. I know yeah. a lot of guys that have them now. You know, it's one of the things that, we, you know, we were talking about people that have uh, issues over yeah. time and get surgeries over time from jujitsu. It's like everybody has something eventually, but a lot of guys are getting disc replacements. Yeah. I, I do have a picture posted. I mean, it might take me a while to find it because I don't Is have it Wi-Fi. On Instagram? Yeah. <clears throat> You'll find it. But, um... Yeah, man, it was just a crazy process, like, just to get back, and after the knee, then I did the surgery, and I was afraid to do it because I just wasn't sure what I was going to look like, because I, there was only, like, three people who have done it. Alan Joban, he was very great with me as well. Oh, Alan did it too? Yeah, and I think we had, you had, we actually had the same doctor, and um, I asked him about it, and we got to talk, and that was cool that he got to express everything, and kind of similar feelings for, for the two of us, so that was amazing to talk to him, talk to Wyman. I talked to Weidman's doctor, but I almost felt like he, the guy didn't really, you know, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but it just felt like he did, doesn't, didn't really, not, I don't want to say care, but it didn't seem like he was really, it was, I feel like I was just another number to him kind of thing. That happens with a lot of yeah, doctors so after I just, a while. That, I think yeah. that's the most PC way to put that's it. It's kind of I, a bummer. Yeah. When <laughs> doctors start thinking people are just like numbers. I'm like, dude, my neck we're talking yeah, about. No, right? I'm like, and I'm not just a regular, I mean, I am a regular guy, but not just a, <laughs> I don't do a regular job. Fuck regular guys. You're the fucking bantamweight <laughs> champion of the world. Don't say, that's, yeah. that's a, and your job is crazy as fuck. Oh, there it is. Wow. Yeah. So that's Clown an emojis. articulating disc. <laughs> so that disc uh, allows your neck to move as freely as if you had the regular disc tissue in there. Yeah. And you don't. Do you feel anything in there? So that's what I was. Oh yeah, that's what I was. I was gonna say. So I hit the doctor up, um, Doctor Watkins, and I go. Is it weird does that it feel like sometimes I need to oil my neck like a like a car? <laughs> Cuz it feels like the joint it gets like dry cuz I can hear it go k -k 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 -k. sometimes, not all the time. Um you, got man. my Shake Shack. Is that right <laughs> after you had it done? Yeah. Wow. Got Shake Shack after. I needed that. Go back to the other picture, Jamie. Shake Shack needs to step their shit up though, man. Do they do? Yeah. What's the matter? Like just the service sometimes is <laughs> yeah. It's like but they'd make a damn good milkshake, so Look I'm okay with it. That is wild, looking at that neck thing.